Today I wanted to talk a little bit about finding your ideal client. How do you narrow down who your ideal client is and how the heck do you find them? Um, you know, hopefully you, you've done a lot of research and you've figured out, you know, what type of client you're going after. We talk about that a lot on this channel. But really at the end of the day, if you're going for the honest handyman style, um, you're going to want to target the more higher end client. You're gonna to wanna to target a client that focuses on quality and professionalism and trustworthiness over price. That's the type of client that you wanna get. So once you have that narrowed down who you wanna target, the question is, how do you find those people, right? That's a huge question, is how do you possibly find these people? Because there's so many people out there calling you every single day that they need handyman work done, and if you're wasting time on these people, I don't wanna put it that way. Like. If, if you're working for these people that aren't your ideal client, you're in a sense wasting yours and their time because they could be working with someone that better fits their, you know, whatever they're looking for and that's probably cheapness and you could start working for someone that better fits your uh, persona and that would be someone who kind of focuses on uh, reliability, quality, professionalism, things like that over price like we said. So how do you find these people? I think a lot of it is trial and error. At the end of the day, you're gonna be sifting through a lot of people. But you need to, I think the biggest thing is, you're the, the filter that is gonna filter out these people and find out who your ideal client is. And once you find that person, things start rolling and the snowball starts getting bigger. Finding that person is very hard. It's gonna require you to start saying no to a lot of people. So a lot of people are gonna call you, they're gonna give you sob stories, they're gonna want you to do everything you can to come out and you know, unbend their ceiling fan. <laughs> but you need to stay true to who you are and what type of work you want to do and the type of client that you want to work for. Um, and you need to keep saying no to those people who are not your ideal client so that when your ideal client does come, you have the time to focus on them and give them the high quality that you want to give. And that's the high quality that they want to get as well. So it's a win-win situation when you're looking at that. There are people out there that desire high quality professional work. You just have to find them. And once you find them, like we said, the snowball starts getting bigger and bigger as it rolls down the hill. Once you find that ideal client, that ideal client is going to tell their friends who are also most likely ideal clients because they're in the same circle of kind of influence as them. Um, and then you can start figuring out how to market to those people. So where do those people live? You know, what's their median income? Um, does their husband work? Even stuff like that, right? Are they a stay-at-home mom or uh, are they retired? Like these are all pertinent information that you need to know. Where do they hang out? Do they predominantly um, homeschool their kids, right? Like how can you kind of get more involved into these different organizations. For instance, if you are trying to track down your ideal client, you know, we found one is, uh, we have a lot of ideal clients out there and you know, one is a lot of these ideal clients are Christian people who send their kids to private schools. So we actually recently um, uh, donated some money to a, a local uh, Christian private school uh, to sponsor their basketball team. So basically our logo is gonna be on all their basketball stuff and um, that's gonna help kind of spread the word as far as our handyman business, um, supporting them in our community. And then that will hopefully, you know, spark some interest and be like, oh, who's this honestly handyman guy? And you know, people will give us a call or they'll keep our name for future reference. Hey friends, I wanted to interrupt this video real quick and let you guys know about Olight. Olight sent me this flashlight and they wanted me to talk about it and I've been trying this out for the last few days. It's the, it's the new Olight Baton 4. It's an absolutely fantastic flashlight. I've really been enjoying it and it is super bright. It has four different modes um, and another great thing about it is there is a charging box that comes with it. And this charging box can charge the Baton 4 four different times without needing to be plugged in. So if you guys are looking to charge something in your car or charge something while camping, this new Baton 4 is really a great flashlight to get. And it's really fantastic. One way that I've been doing it is I've been attaching it to my hat and taking it on early morning runs, it has been absolutely fantastic. And Olight is actually having a Black Friday sale right now. Use the link in the description below to get access to that. And this guy can be on your shopping list this Christmas season. All right, that's enough about flashlights. But you know me, I love flashlights. Let's get back to today's video. So that's like one example, is you need to find out you know, where people 
hang out? Where does your ideal client hang out? Um, maybe how much money do they work? Where, do, where does their husband work? Does their husband even work? Are they retired? Are they stay at home? Do they homeschool? Like what are the attributes of your ideal client? And then that will help you figure out how you can better uh, source that client and market to that client. So marketing doesn't always need to look the same. Just because you know everyone's like, oh yeah, if you spend 2,000 bucks a month on Google, you're gonna start getting a whole bunch of leads. Like, yeah, that's great, but are they your ideal leads? And I think you should definitely spend money on Google, don't get me wrong. But there's also a bunch of different marketing avenues and ways that you could go about it that will help like target your ideal client specifically. Um, and that kind of marketing, isn't necessarily like, like Google marketing is, is like pay per click. So you're putting it out there and Google is advertising it to people that are actively searching handyman in my area. And so those are like hot leads. Whereas when you're marketing to like your ideal client base, like how we're putting a logo on the, you know, you know, private schools, uh, basketball team, that's not, those people aren't looking for a handyman. So those parents of those kids, they're not actively online searching for a handyman. But I know, that they're going to need a handyman sometime in their life. If they own a home, they're most likely going to need a handyman at some point in life. And just by getting our name out there, and you know, on average it says, you know, uh, um, a client has to see your name or your brand at least seven times before they, you know, before they even attempt to buy from you. Uh, sometimes that's more, sometimes that's less. And just by getting your name out there on a jersey or whatever it is, or on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, is one time that people see your name. Same with yard signs. We target specific areas and we put yard signs out there because that's where our ideal clients live. So there's a lot of things that you could do to target your ideal client, but you need to focus on who your ideal client is, where they hang out, what, what's their demographics, and how can you get more of them? That's really the key to it.